The engine is equipped with preventive systems that ensure continuous operation and prevent abnormal shutdown. And if the shutdown does occur, then the protective system's responsibility is to limit the damages to a minimum. Ensuring the failed component or the entire engine itself is not beyond recovery. We have already seen few systems that prevent and protect, like the compressor stall prevention and the integrated drive generator failure protection. Now let's look at what other challenges the engine faces and the systems that help counter them. Automatic Ignition System During the engine start sequence, the ignition system was turned off once the combustion reached a self-sustainable level. This helps to increase the service life of the ignition components. The engine in severe bad weather is susceptible to flameout condition due to water ingestion, and this can lead to abrupt engine shutdown. To prevent this the electronic engine control continuously monitors the engine deceleration rate. If a flameout does occur, then for a given thrust lever position, there is a rapid drop in the engine speed. This triggers the EEC to activate both the ignition system. Once combustion is re-established, the EEC waits for the engine RPM to stabilize. And then it turns off the ignition system again. The engine oil system lubricates and cools the engine gearboxes and bearings. The GE90 has six engine bearings. In the front section of the engine, number one roller bearing and number two ball bearing hold the front of the N1 shaft. Number three ball bearing and number three roller bearing hold the front of the N2 shaft. In the aft section, number four roller bearing and number 5 roller bearing, hold the rear of the N2 and N1 shaft respectively. The four roller bearings, take the radial loads of the engine. The two ball bearings, are the thrust bearings, and take the axial loads of the engine. The gearboxes and the bearings are subjected to high operating speeds and extreme temperatures, which can lead to premature failure. Therefore, they need continuous lubrication and cooling. The engine oil is stored in the oil tank on the engine fan case. The oil temperature in the tank is significantly high due to the returning hot oil from the engine. The oil from the main tank is transferred to the oil pump on the engine gearbox. The oil pump has two parts, one for lubrication and other for scavenging. The lubrication side of the oil pump is driven by the gearbox, which pressurizes the oil and transfers it to the fuel oil heat exchanger. In the heat exchanger the engine oil cools down and heats up the fuel heading for combustion. From the heat exchanger the oil is distributed to the accessories gearbox. Transfer gearbox. Forward engine bearings. And to the aft engine bearings. After lubrication and cooling, the hot oil gets collected in the sumps of the engine. From the sumps the oil is transferred to the scavenge side of the oil pump. Likewise the oil from the two gearboxes return to the scavenge side. The scavenge pump screens the oil for debris, and transfers it back to the main oil tank. Core compartment cooling. The temperature outside the core section of the engine, can increase due to conduction and convection. Majority of the engine components are in the core section. Prolonged functioning in high temperature zone can reduce the service life of the components. One of the unique system on the GE90 is the core compartment cooling. The engine bypass air through a CCC valve is circulated outside the core case to keep the temperature in the section down and ensure the engine accessories continue to function in a controlled environment. Engine fire protection. Despite all the safety and cooling systems used on the GE90, the engine still remains the most hazardous zone on the aircraft. 
arcing due to electrical shorts in generator power cables, rupturing of the engine bleed ducts, damages to the hydraulic lines, resulting in fluid spillage, and engine fuel supply leakage, can lead to fire in the nacelle of the engine. It is vital to identify fire condition and take necessary action. Therefore, the engine is equipped with overheat and fire detector loops. The loops run through several sections of the engine. To prevent false warning, two loops are installed in every section. The fire detection computer is in the avionics compartment of the aircraft and only gives a fire warning when both the loops on the engine sense the fire condition. Let's see how the entire system functions. When an engine fire occurs, the temperature in the core section increases. The rise in temperature changes the resistance of the detectors. The engine fire computer constantly monitors the resistance value. The fire causes the resistance of the detectors to reach the threshold limit. This triggers the fire computer to give a fire warning in the cockpit. The fire computer unlocks the left engine fire switch. Now the switch can be pulled out. Using the switch, sends multiple commands to close all the engine systems. Fuel supply to the engine is stopped by closing the engine spar valve and the fuel valves in the hydromechanical unit. The bleed air pressure regulating valve is closed to stop the engine bleed system. Hydraulic supply to the pump is stopped by closing a shutoff valve and the hydraulic pump is depressurized to stop the output supply. The breakers of the integrated drive generator and the backup generator are tripped. By pulling the switch the engine is starved of all possible sources that might have caused the fire. If the condition still persists, the engine fire extinguishing system must be used. Two extinguisher bottles are located in the cargo compartment of the aircraft. A single fire bottle has two connections, one for each engine. To use the number one fire bottle, the left engine fire switch needs to be turned in the left direction. Electric current is now sent to activate the squib on the bottle. A squib is a miniature explosive device that once activated ruptures the diaphragm of the fire bottle. Pressurized fire extinguishing agent now travels to the left engine where it gets discharged and attempts to extinguish the fire. After using one of the bottle, the engine has to be monitored for 30 seconds to see if the fire has been extinguished. If the warning still continues, then the second fire bottle must be used by turning the switch to the right side. Extinguisher agent from the second bottle now reaches the engine to stop the fire. As we have used two bottles, the engine fire extinguisher system is no longer available. In the final installment of the Boeing 777 GE90 engine series, we will push the engine to its maximum power. Thanks for watching.